Are you consuming multivitamins like this? Or maybe even something healthier like this or this? If you are, you need to stop immediately. Take those supplements and either go return them if you can, or just throw them in the trash if they contain this one particular ingredient or element. So before you go spending your hard earned cash on supplements that might be doing you more harm than good, definitely stay tuned for the rest of this video so you can find out what particular element or ingredient you want to make sure is not in your multivitamin or any supplement for that matter. And it's not one of these, you know, additive chemical stabilizers, preservatives, etc. This is a substance that has otherwise been considered something that is healthy. In fact, for many people, especially women, you might be intentionally looking for a multivitamin with a surplus of this particular mineral or element in it. However, I want to caution you against this because all of the science information behind it is actually highly misconstrued and misunderstood. So come with me if you want to learn more. We're about to head up the mountain. So if I'm out of breath, it's because I'm at 7,000 plus elevation. And I want to tell you all about this particular mineral that you want to make sure that you're not supplementing with and that you're actually doing everything you can to minimize your contact with. If I told you that iron, that's right, the heavy metal, the mineral, iron, something that you tend to want to supplement, most people at least, is a potentially deadly substance, would you believe me? Well, I don't actually want you to just blindly believe me when I make that statement. I'd rather you watch this entire video so that way you can become acquainted with some of the studies and the physiology behind iron's toxic effects in the body as a heavy metal and when in excess can contribute to cancer, heart disease, in a variety of other illnesses. So it was around the 1960s when a study was conducted in Africa by the World Health Organization when iron's true toxic effects became apparent. Basically, this study was conducted on a group of African Americans who were otherwise anemic and they were supplemented with iron because that's what you do when you're anemic, right? You need more iron. However, what happened to these people was alarming. The death rate dramatically increased. It didn't correct the anemia, it actually just contributed to early mortality rates. So this of course spiked some sort of interest or concern for researchers and physiologists. And it was later discovered that iron is actually a necessary regulatory substance for the proliferation and the survival of things like parasites, bacteria, and even cancer cells. And this particular researcher in the field of iron physiology later concluded that iron has very similar immunosuppressive effects as other heavy metals like lead, mercury, and cadmium, amongst others, and is a major contributing factor to the development of lymphatic cancers and things like leukemia, basically by dramatically increasing the production of free radicals. So free radicals, also referred to as reactive oxygen species, basically cause DNA and cell damage or death. In fact, this research and the work of this physiologist aside, the damaging effects of iron on the immunity have been known for at least 50 years. It's been well established that people who get blood transfusions actually have damaged immune function. Where on the other hand, people who regularly donate blood tend to become healthier, especially right after donating the blood. There's an increased functioning of the immune system, the metabolism, and a decreased production of free radicals and inflammation. Furthermore, one of my particularly favorite researchers and physiologists by the names of Hans Selye also discovered and noticed the damaging effects of iron. He found out that if he administered large doses of iron into people, that they could develop a form of scleroderma, which is basically the fibrosis or the inflammation of the skin tissue. Now there's a lot I could talk about in regards to how iron works to achieve all of its damaging degenerative effects. But the basic way that iron damages all of our immune cells, the entire immune system, our tissues and things like the skin goes back to its effect on the production of those free radicals. So in general, as we age, iron tends to accumulate in the skin tissue, very similarly to calcium. So as we age, we have less calcium in our teeth and our bones, and we have more of it in our skin tissue, leading to things like osteoporosis, tooth decay, teeth loss, baldness, and the general inflammation and the aging of the skin. So much like calcium, iron also tends to accumulate in the skin 
strengthening the tissues as we age, inducing a greater amount of oxidative damage, which not only damages, injures, and even kills various cells in the body, but can directly age our tissues, our organs, and even things like the skin. So let's move along and talk about some of the common misconceptions around iron. Probably the number one is, don't women need more iron than men, especially considering that they menstruate, so they lose blood, so they also lose iron, right? Well, this is actually a huge misconception. You see, first off, women only lose trace amounts of iron during menstruation, a couple of milligrams. Not to mention, the second major misconception is that women actually absorb iron more efficiently than men do, meaning that they actually have a less likelihood of accumulating the iron in the tissues and a greater likelihood to actually use the iron for any cellular functions that it might serve. So this is probably one of the only benefits of having an excess amount of estrogen. Usually women tend to experience more degenerative diseases because they have more estrogen, which more or less is a stress substance. But estrogen does have one beneficial effect in this regard. It helps the cells to absorb iron more efficiently. So generally speaking, women have less accumulated iron in the tissues, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. However, because estrogen dilutes the hemoglobin in the blood, women are more likely to have anemia. So anemia isn't actually as much of a problem of an iron deficiency as much as it is usually hypothyroidism, so low thyroid, high estrogen, and low copper, which causes a couple of different things in regards to anemia development. First and foremost, again, estrogen dilutes the hemoglobin. So it basically decreases the red blood cell count in the blood. The second thing is that iron actually might be a contributing factor to anemia because iron destroys vitamin E. And it also increases the rate of lipid peroxidation, which is the oxidation of the fats in your body, which ultimately would lead to, again, a decreased red blood cell count because you need vitamin E to protect the proper regulatory functions of the red blood cells. So to summarize, iron is not deficient usually in anemia. If anything, vitamin E is deficient along with copper because anemia is really an issue of red blood cell count. And iron's oxidative effects and damaging effects to the protective substance, vitamin E, would actually make it a contributing factor to low red blood cell count. Fortunately, there are a couple of things that you can do to correct this issue. Number one would obviously be to avoid the supplementation of iron altogether, which would lead to an increased risk of immunodeficiencies, oxidative damage, cellular aging, amongst other issues. The second thing you're probably gonna wanna do is if you are concerned about anemia and a low red blood cell count, you're gonna want to ensure that you're supplementing with at least 100 milligrams of a high quality vitamin E. In short, vitamin E will not only act as an antioxidant protecting your cells and your blood from the damaging oxidative effects of iron, but it will also ensure the proper production of red blood cells. The third thing you can do is make sure that you're getting in enough dietary copper. Copper does a few things. Copper has many opposing effects to iron. Generally speaking, anything that iron does in a damaging way, copper has the protective effect or the opposite effect. So iron actually decreases your body's ability to use oxygen. And copper ensures the proper consumption and regulation of oxygen, which is important for the production of red blood cells and obviously the use of blood in the body. And copper also actually ensures that iron doesn't accumulate in your tissues. And copper is really important for things like proper skin and hair pigmentation. So oftentimes when people have a deficiency in copper, there's more accumulated iron in the tissues, which can cause pigmentation issues of the skin, so age spots, liver spots, but it can also contribute to the grain or the whitening of the hair or your hair becoming copperish and brittle, which really just means that the iron is accumulating the scalp and oxidizing your hair. So in regards to copper supplementation, I generally do not advise supplementing like in a pill because a lot of the forms of those metals are not properly utilized and do more harm than good. So I'd recommend getting your copper from food sources. And here's one of the big issues with veganism. You can't get copper from any plant foods. So actually a copper deficiency is one of the major deficiencies that you'll run into on a vegan diet that people don't really talk about because you're really only going to find it in foods like beef liver in various organs and shellfish oysters and things like shrimp probably being the highest concentration of dietary copper. The last thing I would recommend 
for avoiding the damaging effects of iron would be that you consume good quality coffee anytime you're in contact with iron. So whether you're consuming an iron rich meal, like something let's say like beef liver or something like oysters, or you're cooking on cast iron or any of those things, if you take coffee with it, it will actually inhibit the absorption of that iron. And one last tip, based on research and my personal experience, if you donate blood at least once a year, that's going to greatly decrease the accumulation of iron in your body and has many beneficial effects. Regularly donating blood can improve immune function, decrease inflammation, it can help with things like hair loss, it can even help with things like anemia. So that's it for today's video. Guys, I was starting to get icicles growing my beard, so I figured I'd come inside, and I think I covered the great majority of everything I wanted to say about iron. To recap, basically, iron is a toxic heavy metal. It increases the rate of oxidation, or free radical oxidative damage, I should say. It directly destroys vitamin E, and vitamin E is a protective substance for your whole body and your red blood cells. So less vitamin E means more fragile red blood cells, which means that they're going to have a decreased turnover rate, resulting in things like anemia. And if you've been confused about the potential correlation between iron and anemia, Although a iron deficiency in severe cases might lead to temporary anemia, anemia is more so governed or caused by an excess of iron, which destroys vitamin E, as well as a copper deficiency and a deficiency in the thyroid, also known as hypothyroidism. Not to mention that a lot of the so-called symptoms of anemia are really just symptoms of hypothyroidism. So hopefully this video has brought some helpful insight for you. If you have a multivitamin or supplement with iron in it, I'd probably recommend just throwing it away or getting a refund if you can, and instead stick to focusing on copper-rich sources of foods, particularly things like grass-fed beef liver, oysters, and do some other things to mitigate the absorption of iron as mentioned. If you enjoyed this video, definitely be sure to give it a big thumbs up, share it with anybody in need and who might find it helpful, Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you are new here and you want to see more content just like this. Otherwise, until next time, I'm Nick. Peace.